Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hello, friends. I'm Ralph. I'm behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And here we are. Uh, first day of November. First day of November, last weekend of uh, the cottage. And as a matter of fact, show them what's happening outside. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Snow. We have never had snow here. So, um... Not at the first of November, but we have it, and it's coming down. So, anyway, so, you know what? A good day for a heartwarming, a hearty, a heartwarming meal. And because it is our last weekend, we are really desperately trying to use up a lot of things that we have in the cupboards and whatnot. So, so what's it going to be? So, what's it going to be? Um, I did pick up some broccoli at the market and then I had in the freezer I had this cooked chicken okay uh, left over so right. I've got I, I don't know if I'll use all of this but I've got this cooked chicken here okay so chicken and broccoli casserole, casserole equals chicken divan oh and that was a request actually from one of our food friends who watch something I can't remember it which was one. somebody did ask us about well here it is now we're not making it again we're using up what we have on hand so uh, chicken divan is usually chicken broccoli in some sort of white sauce cream sauce it could be a Mornay sauce it could be a, what if it's uh, evening bechamel. time if it's evening time it wouldn't be morning Mornay what did you say morning sauce Mornay oh, uh, sauce. So, but, uh, so poking around, it's like, well, what do we have that we can make a sauce that would kind of be similar to it? So, I'm relying on a can of cream of celery soup. All purpose gravy. Not all chicken divan has mushrooms in it, but I've got a can of mushrooms. So, you know what? We're going to use it. Mushrooms go good with chicken. And then, to give it that tang, I'm going to employ the use of some mayonnaise. Special mayonnaise from, uh, isn't this from, oops, from your brother's... Uh, yeah, uh, my brother brings it up from uh, North Carolina for us, which wow. is really good. Yeah, it's supposed um, to be very good. Anyway, so this is what um, I'm going to put together. Now, but what I'm going to do first is I want to just steam the broccoli. Don't really want to cook it all the way, but I want to, uh, I want to get the broccoli a quick steam. So I'm just chopping up... I had two large heads of broccoli here, Ralph, and we are just going to chop that up and put it in here. I'm going to use all of this nice broccoli up. If you were in a pinch, you could use, uh, you know, frozen broccoli certainly, but so you're fresh gonna, is great. You're going to steam it just to soften up before putting it into the casserole. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. The chicken's already cooked, so what I'll do is I'm going to finish cutting up this broccoli, and then we'll come back and we'll start putting our sauce together for the casserole. All right, so I'm just gonna steam this broccoli off for maybe five minutes tops, just to kind of get it softened. It's more so, especially the kind of the stocky part. Right. Um, I wanna make sure, because the casserole won't need to cook a long time, and I just wanna make sure that this broccoli will be tender. So a, a, a nice hot casserole on a wintry, November day. Yeah. Be right back. Getting juiced up on some coffee before we <laughs> start the next... I'm just trying to stay warm. I know. <laughs> okay. It? Yes. I've uh, got uh, our broccoli steamed here. Uh, okay. I love See broccoli. how nice and green it is? Um, now, I've got a 9 by 13 casserole dish that I've sprayed with nonstick spray. So we've got that. Okay. Now we're going to put our sauce together. Again, you know, you could, if you didn't want to take this shortcut, and I know some people are just appalled about <laughs> using um, all your little time savers soups um, to cook with, uh, and that's fine. We've always you know, said though, this is how our, how our moms did it. This uh, is how our moms did it, and they were know. healthy meals without. Uh, I mean, because you know we burned off a lot of energy, energy playing and stuff, so you can eat like this as long as you there's get out a convenience and work to it out. out. Yeah, and you know, there's a convenience to uh, to it, but again, you could make a um, you could make a Mornay sauce or a bechamel sauce, um, and if you did it with chicken stock, of course, that would be ideal. 
Um, and you can use white wine, I you think. You could use white thing. wine. We could put a little white wine in here if we wanted to, but we're going to use, for the tang factor, we're going to use man all right, mayonnaise. So I got a, a can of a cream of celery soup. I'm gonna, so any cream soup would do, right? Any cream soup. Small would, can. I, that's what I had. I mean, you might you could use uh, cream of broccoli. Obviously, would be great. Or you could use cream of asparagus, cream of onion, cream of whatever. But uh, cream soup celery's would be good because it's very subtle. And mushroom would have been good since you are also using mushrooms. I'm putting in maybe about a cup of mayonnaise. Come in, and then. Um, that gives it a tang, as you said. Right. That'll give us. That'll give it a little bit of a tang. Okay. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna. I'm putting in just a little it. bit of salt. You know that cream soup has got plenty of salt in it. But where I'm gonna put in some nice black pepper here. Fresh ground black pepper. And then just maybe a half a teaspoon of curry powder. Okay. That'll just give it a little bit of warmth in the background. Mm, curry okay? powder. Okay. So not so much as you taste it as it uh, enhances the other flavors. Yeah, perhaps. we're not making curry chicken here, but I just uh, I'm going to put that in and and so okay now we're going to mix all that together. So here's our our sauce. Now it's pretty thick, although you know when it bakes, it will uh, loosen up a Thin little up. bit. So let's do this. Let's start with our chicken. So I'm going to just spread this chicken. These were, I think, chicken thighs, and I'm just going to cover so the bottom could, of the pan. You could use white meat if you prefer. You could you use could, a mix you could of use, the two. You could use boneless uh, chicken breasts. What do you think? I'm going to do it all. Should I do it all? Yeah, do it yeah, all. Yeah, do it. We're so, doing it all. So uh, any, any boneless chicken, breast, thighs, uh, whatever, but it's... Um, could be a mix. We happen to be using mostly dark meat here, right? Yeah, that's what, that's what we had on hand. So... Good. You know, this is probably, this is quite a bit, this is probably, um, oh, if I had to guess, it's probably six cups, maybe even seven cups of meat, um, but uh, that's what we have left over, so that's what we're going to use. Now, let's get our broccoli over here, and get a hot pan, and we're going to put our broccoli on top. Let me get a little spoon. I did a little um, off-camera research on the origins of Chicken Divan, and like a lot of famous American dishes, it was created at a hotel, New, a New York hotel, by a chef at a at a hotel with a sort of a fancy French name I can't remember, but it, it is an American dish created by I believe an Italian at a <laughs> New York hotel, giving it a sort of a French name, and he won a contest for it in the early 1900s and created the Chicken Divan. That, that is that um, has become a very you know uh, staple of uh, casserole dishes and that's such an American uh, story you know uh, again you know something with a French name that was created in New York by a chef that was not French well you know I just remember uh, back when I was a kid and this seemed like to be a uh, an entree that a lot of moms made and they probably took you know plenty of shortcuts right okay so and, you know we are just by chance listening to one of our favorite Italian American composers Henry Mancini oh we love him. we love him great okay so now we've got chicken down broccoli down now oh you know what we, we said we were gonna put in some mushrooms this is a total option here, and it's not traditional. Um, you could put in some sliced almonds if you had them. That that often goes in a chicken divan. Mm. Uh, I don't have any sliced almonds, but we had this can of sliced mushrooms. Again, we're using things up. Now, here's our sauce. And so I'm going to kind of just paint the sauce over the top so of this. So you're basically coating it loosely. It doesn't have to be precise is the idea exactly. I'm getting. Because it's going to melt into it, it's I believe. It's going to all melt down into it. Okay. Now, is this going to create its own crust, or do you have to put a... a well, we're going to put cheese on top, oh. um, which will be the next step, and then we're going to... Um, I'm going to put some buttered breadcrumbs ah, on top of that. I see you have some that. panko breadcrumbs yep. sitting out. Okay. So I've got the oven heating to 350 degrees, and I'm going to finish getting this 
um, topped with our sauce and we'll be back. All right, we're back. We, all right, so we're almost done here. Now, here's what we found out when I was putting this on. Yeah, you better tell folks what you did. <laughs> we didn't have enough. We did not have enough um, sauce to really cover. So this one little can was not enough. No. So I went in the back in the cupboard and said, gosh, what else do we have? We had cream of asparagus. All right. So So you just... Re I made, a double, a, I made a another double batch, batch so of... You used the um, yeah, I mayo, mean, if we, if the we curry were just powder, making, If you were just using... Salt. Um, if you were just using a 9x9 nine nine or an 8x8 eight eight casserole, you know, a smaller one, Maybe a, or a one and a half or two quart casserole. I think we, you'd be okay with the one can recipe. Ah, it's because this but is so this big. Is so and, big. And we used all that chicken. Okay, so that makes um, sense. So. So you just doubled up on what you did. I just yeah, want to make people. The, we're gonna feed the neighborhood here today for lunch, folks. So you used a little curry powder, salt, uh, mayo, and an, and another can of. Of cream of soup, soup. Mm -hmm. cream of something soup. Okay. So. Oh wow! Now you're gonna put cheese on top. Now we're gonna put cheese on top. Okay. And so, you could use um, again. I had this bag of cheddar cheese in the refrigerator. You could certainly use a Parmesan cheese if you wanted to. Um, you could use a Swiss cheese if you wanted to. This is, we're going to call this Chicken Devon a la Cottage. How's that? I like that. Because this is... Cottage leftovers. Cottage, exactly. Cottage leftovers. Okay. So that'll be good. Now, here's what here's what else I found. I found some breadcrumbs. Now, these are panko, which I really like. What is that, butter? That's melted butter, about two tablespoons. Wow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take maybe, oh, about a cup of breadcrumbs. And let me get a little fork. And we're gonna mix these up. You may recognize Herbie Mann's Memphis Underground in the background. Is that what this is? Very I love funky, it. but this is Henry Mancini doing it. It's a great piece. Another great American and uh, Henry Mancini putting his spin on it. Very funky. I love it when you have um, different composers. Of music, some you you know you think when you think of Henry Mancini, you think of you know soundtracks and some easy stuff, listening, easy listening music, and then when you think of um, Herbie Man, Herbie Man, you know you think of this real funky jazz stuff, jazz flute, and you think <laughs> how would they even know each other? But but actually, you know they they respect each other's work. I think it's beautiful. Now this will help toast it up a little bit, and I think we'll just add a nice little crust. To the top, so we're going to take these buttered breadcrumbs, and we're just going to sprinkle them. If you don't have breadcrumbs, you could probably do um, potato chips. <laughs> Why not? Or if if you had some saltines, saltine crackers, yeah, you could do cracker crumbs. But again, we're really in a use-up mode because this is it, folks. Another season has ended. It's kind of a way that we mark uh, the certain passages of time in our life is opening and closing the cottage so while it's always a very bittersweet weekend um, having to close it gives us something to really look forward to well like putting in a new stove next year yeah we will put in a new stove oh, next I'm looking year, forward to that and we'll reopen the cottage and get ready for another season in the meantime we keep cooking because we keep eating and we'll just do that in our Detroit kitchen okay so, 350 degrees, let's put it in. Um, I'm gonna give this about 40, 45 minutes, okay? We'll be back. Chicken Devon a la cottage. So it's been 45 minutes, okay? And the sun's coming out, that's it's good. Sun, yes, it's starting to melt that snow. The kitchen's uh, smelling good. Okay. The kitchen is smelling great. Check it. Yum. Look at that. How are we going to eat all this? Well, we'll, we'll have figure to, it out. Like you said, we'll have to feed the neighbors. Yep. Um, so what I'm going to do, you can see it's still bubbling there. Um, we're going to let it cool for maybe five or ten minutes. 
again, you know, a lot of times casseroles, especially when you've got sauces and things like that, um, when they're hot, you want them to tighten up a little bit. Okay. okay, and so we're just gonna we're gonna let it hang on the table there, rest as good as it smells exactly, Ralph, and let it rest, and then we'll come back and we'll dig into our chicken divan a la cottage. We'll listen to more of the Mancini Generation album that we picked up recently it's from the '70s, where he discovered synthesizers. <laughs> All right. Has it cooled long enough? Yeah, it's cooled. Uh, you know, it's been uh, yeah, five minutes or so. and So, we've got to talk about, you know, using stuff up and making a little comfort lunch. In addition to our cottage-style chicken divan, I found a box of <laughs> rice which we love. San Francisco uh, treat. Yep. And um, pineapple, pineapple jello. jello. So, I mean... Hello? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get any better. All right. So, you know what we're going to do? Let's dig in here, Ralph. And I'm just going to see you got a nice look at those breadcrumbs on there. Mm. How's that? Wow, it's steaming up the camera. It's so hot okay. and juicy. So, you could let it sit a little longer if you wanted it to set up longer. Yeah. But, but wow. that beautiful, creamy. Yes. Can't and wait to dig in. Of course. Here we go. Wait, it's too hot, I bet. It is hot. I'm going to try a piece of this broccoli, though. See, the broccoli's not mushy, yeah, but you... it's got a nice texture to it. Mmm. Oh. Are you tasting the, the sauce? The sauce, too? Here's a piece of the chicken. So. The mayonnaise gave it a nice tang. Nice tang. So you can taste that. And the curry, real subtle in the background. Very thanks, nice. Yeah. Thanks to Brother Greg for that mayonnaise again. Yeah. And thanks to our food friend who suggested chicken divan on one of our other episodes. So we're gonna enjoy it for lunch, dinner, breakfast, so, and sounds uh, like this chicken divan is more like chicken divine. <laughs> it is. Anyways, we had a great time doing this as always yeah hope you had a great time being with us and you know what we'll see you next time on cavalcade, cavalcade of food. food bye bye <laughs>